And welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. This is a beginner's tutorial absolutely for the beginners that want to learn to crochet. And today we're going to be using this example of a baby's blanket in order to go. It's just single crochet back and forth and today I'm going to teach you how to hold the yarn, how to hold the hook, how to move your hook and etc. Show you all the tips in and out of being able to crochet. So today let's begin the color block crochet blanket together and learning to crochet. So here is our pattern today. It is just a one page pattern and all it is is that once we get to the second row it's just a continuous of the same row over and over until it gets to a certain amount of dimensions and then you switch the color as you see within the project. So it's actually quite an easy project to do. It's just one simple stitch going back and forth in order to do it. So here's an example of what we've already, what I've already done in advance just to show you. It's a nice tight blanket so you don't see through this at all and it's just a really wonderful opportunity and it's using Bernat blanket yarn which is extremely thick. There's no plies in this yarn so therefore you don't have to worry about splitting anything as you particularly go. So it's a really uh, nice idea and in today's tutorial I'm going to go from the basics. So if you think you know how to crochet a certain step you can fast forward in today's video in order to get to the steps that you need to learn but I'm going to start from the absolute beginner from learning how to hold the yarn, how to hold the hook and etc. in order to play. So without further ado let's get started right now. This video has sound alerts added. When you hear this sound, it will be your signal that the segment is finishing up. Press stop and crochet the instructions and then press play again to continue along in your project. So in today's tutorial we're going to use a six millimeter size J crochet hook in order to play. So there's different sizes of hooks and you see it has it here. This says six millimeter. Now because I'm Canadian I use metric as per the Canadian uh, metric system and then certain areas around the world use metric as well and in the US you will be represented by a letter and the letter is the size J slash 10. So it's just an interesting thing. So uh, J slash 10 is the same thing as six millimeter and you're going to be using this hook. This is an ergonomic hook and it varies different from hooks that don't have this uh, foam thing. I crochet faster using an ergonomic versus one that doesn't have it at all and because it, it is ergonomic it sits in my hand really quite nicely. Now if you're looking for a hook you want to have it so that it has a flat edge on the top of the hook just like you see here and what this is is that when your thumb sits in the uh, on the hook your thumb will stay in the flat area so no matter how you rotate it your thumb will always know which way is up because of the fact that it's flat. So if there's no um, flatness what happens is when you go to use it you can't tell by your fingertips what is up and what's down. So you want to look for a hook that has a flat edge just like so. These over time have become very inexpensive to have these kind of hooks and it usually has a metal beginning and it just is inserted inside the handle here and it goes all the way to the end. So you also want to look for hooks that extend into your hand nicely. So not all hooks are the equal length all the way from start to the one side. Sometimes they make hooks that are slightly smaller and they jab into the palm of your hand. It depends on the size of your palm as well and so it's not comfortable if the hook is jamming into your palm. So you want to make sure you get a hook that just kind of glides and just stays on the outside just like so, like so as you're using it. Some people like to crochet where it's like a pencil like this. I've never been able to do that and also it causes carpal tunnel in the long term. Let me just show you the angle of that better. So in crochet there's two fundamental different ways of holding the hook. I hold it like a butter knife just like you see here and it just is glide in and out just like this. And because you're doing that there's no tension here on the actual wrist itself because it's in a natural position just like you're eating food. Now other people tend to held, hold it like this. Now this was originally created way back in the old days when crochet was really more for the upper class uh, citizens. And so what it was is that it looks more daintier for a woman to crochet like this than it does to look like you're eating food. So what happens with this is that when you go to crochet your your wrist naturally does a bend here more often than it would be if it's like this. So you want to pay attention that if you're learning to crochet you have to choose your way but this one in the long term has consequences of creating carpal tunnel for yourself especially if you crochet a lot. Now it's just kind of an interesting way you have to figure out what is going to work for you and what's not and just hold it in a certain way that you think is more comfortable. But I'm going to be teaching it and all my tutorials teach it this way. So if you're wanting to learn this way you'll have to find a different host to do that. Again I find it just is too crampy in there and I've never gotten being able to have been able to get used to the motion of holding a hook just like that. So let's talk about holding your yarn. So you're going to have the hook in the one side 
like so. And then you have this arm here that is feeding the particular hook. So what happens here, you could be left or right handed, it doesn't really matter. The opposite side that doesn't hold the hook holds the yarn. And so you want to be able to feed it. Now there are so many different ways that people hold things. I'm gonna show you the way that it holds for me. And then if you need to wrap things extra around your fingers in order to do so, you can figure that out on your own in order to determine uh, if that works for you better or not. So let's uh, go through some of the procedures on the way to hold this yarn. Now the yarn ball should always be sitting on the same side of your body that the arm is feeding the hook. So this is the arm that is going to feed the, uh, the hook with the yarn. So therefore my yarn ball should be in this direction here. Just right here. It should never be crossing in front and coming in from a different direction because it will come across your hand and into your work and obviously if it's coming from a different direction it won't be able to do that. You also don't want it sitting in front of you because what happens when you go to do this if it's in front of you when it goes to feed it it's pulling out of your hand and if it's beside you it's pulling across your hand like so. So there's different ways to holding it. So if you can close your fingers and there are no gaps here this is the best way to do it but if you're wearing rings and stuff that will change your story as well. So if you close your hands and you can see gaps in your hands especially here then you know you might have a problem and it doesn't mean you can't crochet it just means you have to adapt to that also. So there's two ways to control tension on your yarn. It, you control it through this gapping area here and through this finger right here. Okay, so the, these two fingers, this one and this one, control the tension to the hook. So let's uh, review how to do that. So as a practice, let's go five times on learning how to put this into your hand. So I want you to open up your pinky finger right here and I want you to place the yarn into your pinky and close your pinky. Can you pull on this yarn and it provides tension? So if your hand does not close, and you or you have a gap if you pull it should be it, and it's too easy then you might have a problem. So some people what they do is that they wrap it around their pinky twice and then come or once and then come across. But the problem for that is that if you're like me and you do have tension here this can create a little bit of rug burn. So you have to determine what works for you and you have to make sure that the yarn is coming out of the ball nice and easily. So let's uh, review that again. So put your hand out and open up your pinky finger and take the other yarn and put it in across the top and close your pinky. Do you have tension? Okay, so let's do that again. So out, open up that pinky, place in your yarn, close your pinky. Do you have tension? Okay. So that's how you kind of do it. So now what we have to do is that we have to figure out how we're going to hold this yarn once it gets here. So let's review that next. Okay, so now we're gonna review on how to hold the yarn when it's close to the hook. So let's put it across your hand and close. What I want you to do is that I want you to rotate your hand like this. Okay, so you got it down, rotate up. Again, you can fast forward if you understand what's going on. So you're going up. So now I want you to start closing in your hand. So let's watch how to do that. So what we're gonna do is that we're going to keep this finger here from being part of the work when it comes to the hook. And what we want to do is we wanna use this finger and this thumb to work together. So let's take the yarn out and I want you to pinch this finger to your thumb like it's a flamenco dancer. Bum bum, bum bum. Can you do that? So take this finger and this thumb and put it together. Bum bum, bum bum. Okay, see how this finger is staying up in the air? So just think of it that you're the Queen of England having high tea and instead of her pinky in the air drinking her tea, it's this finger here. In time, this finger does not not need to be pointed but it is the tension finger between here and here to create it for the hook. So boom, 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 boom. You get it? So let's now put the yarn back into our hand and let's do the next step. So putting the yarn back into your hand, okay, close your hand and turn it. So which fingers are we gonna uh, clump together? We're gonna put these two together. Boom, boom. And what I want you to do is that I want you to grab this yarn. Okay. 
So with your pinky closed you have tension. Look at that. You have tension and with this you have tension. So think like this is like a violin string. If you go like this and all of a sudden it just comes out you're not tight enough, right? So obviously you have a tension issue. So just pull it back here and pinch. So this should be like a violin string. Okay? So you should have tension on this. So let's review that again. So you're in over top, you're turning sideways, you're gonna do your flamenco dancer and you're going to pinch that yarn. And this should be tension right here. See? It's playing music right here with your crochet hook. Okay, so you get that. One more time. Pinch. So you're thinking okay, well now you have the hook in your hand and this is not going to a hook but this is how you hold your yarn. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to create a slip knot to then start the hook. Let's begin to do that next. To start your project obviously look you can't grab onto anything. There's nothing to grab onto. So you have to create a knot that begins but it's not just a typical knot. It's called a slip knot. So the slip knot when you pull on it creates tension and will just tighten onto the hook but not tie itself to the hook. So in order to create a slip knot and there are many different ways but my favorite way is the way that I'm about to show you. So you have your hand out like this. Okay, so put your hand out like this. Okay, just like you see it. So I'm sitting in front of you or you're in front of me and now what I want you to do is that I want you to talk about somebody across the way. So with this finger I want you to point at that person and I want you just to point. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about somebody over here somewhere and I'm gonna point. Look at her. Oh my God, can you believe what she's wearing? So just out and it's like oh my God, look what she's wearing and you're pointing to your friend on where she's sitting. I know it's a terrible analogy but it works. <laughs> Trust me. So okay, so out and you're pointing and, and you're talking about somebody. It's never impolite to gossip just so you know. <laughs> okay, so there you go. So you're pointing at somebody. So that's what we're gonna do. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna use this finger here and these three fingers in order to create a slip knot. So let's begin to do that next. To create a slip knot the yarn is behind my hand. Okay, so it's away from me. Okay, and I'm talking about somebody over here. I want you to grab this yarn strand just like you see here and I want you to rotate it around this finger twice. So I'm gonna pick it up and come in front of my finger once and I'm gonna come around again and twice. And you should have it wrapped around your finger twice and the yarn is in the back of your hand coming forward. Okay, so let's do that again. So we're gonna point at somebody across the table the yarn is sitting behind my hand and I'm gonna take this yarn strand and wrap it around my finger twice. Just like that. Okay, so just you're gonna talk about somebody and you're gonna wrap it around your finger twice. Let's do it again. So in behind, wrap it around twice. last time. So wrap it around twice. So now that you've wrapped it around twice I want you to grab two things now. So with these three fingers that are pinching down I want you to grab onto this yarn and to this yarn here. So just bring them together. So just grab them together like they're one unit and just put them into your three fingers. Okay, so let's do that again. So just pin pinching them together. You see that? So what you're doing is you're providing tension here. So I'm playing the violin strings. There, I should not be able to pull anything out. Okay, so you have to reef on it really good because you're clamping onto the three down here. So to create the slip knot we have to do two steps. We have to play leapfrog. So here's leapfrog. We're gonna take this 
strand and leapfrog over to this part of the finger and then it's this one's turn and we're gonna leapfrog over him but also over to the end of the finger and you've created a slip knot. So let's play leapfrog. So we're gonna just take this one and we're just gonna use your fingers and just leapfrog over and just pinch it down and hold it and now with the other strand that's sitting there you wanna grab that strand and leapfrog. Oops, I went right over top of my finger and there is my slip knot right here that starts the project. So let's do that again. So we're just gonna put it into your finger and clamp. So we're gonna play leapfrog. So this one goes over this one and then this one goes over it but he jumps too far and goes right up over top of the finger and there is your slip knot. So around your finger, pinch. So we're gonna play leapfrog. So leap over and then with the new one here he leaps over, whoops, goes right over the top of the finger and you have your slip knot. One more time. You can reverse if you haven't got it yet. So wrap, pinch, leapfrog over. So leap over the first one and then his friend leaps over but leaps too far and goes right up over top of the finger. So there is your slip knot. So you can just let it go and there is your slip knot that is ready for the hook. So let's begin to insert that into the hook next. So what we're going to do is that if you've determined that you're gonna hold it the same way I am. Okay, this is the way I'm going to show you. I cannot crochet this way as I told you already. So I'm going to show it the way that I'm comfortable with. So what you want to do is that you want to place the hook inside this loop. Okay, this is the slip knot. And see this strand here that's going to the yarn? That is the one that you're gonna pull and when you pull on it, it's going to pull the knot tight. Okay, it's called the slip knot. So it slips that knot up onto the hook just like so. And therefore you have a smaller loop. Okay, so we can always reset things if we have to. So let's just uh, show you that again. So we're just gonna make a, a slip knot that's bigger. So you're gonna put it in and then you're just gonna pull on it. But you're not gonna like tie down a boat with it. So you wanna just pull it so it's snug but you don't wanna pull it so that you see that this yarn is warping and getting thinner because you're pulling on it like you're tying down a house to you know from flying away from Cam Kansas. So you just wanna do that. So just again do your leapfrog, come over, insert the hook and now just pull like so. So now you're ready and now we have to introduce our hand back into the equation because now the loop is now ready for you to be able to crochet. You should be able to remove your crochet in and out of this loop easily. If you can't loop, uh, get it out then there's a problem. So we have to just uh, consider that next. So let's get our hand now set up as if we're going to crochet properly. And we are going to crochet properly but let's get our hand set up anyway. So let's get ready to in use our hand now. So remember what I had you do. You opened up your pinky and you slid the yarn across. Then you closed your pinky and you turned your hand upright and then you did a flamenco dancer. But where are you going to grab? You were going to grab the piece of knot that is underneath this particular loop. So when you do your flamenco dancer and a lot of people in new crocheters they go like this with this finger. Keep that finger out there. Okay, we don't wanna have to hurt you. So keep it so it's a flamenco dancer and you are going to use the flamenco dancing and you're going to pinch the knot that is underneath. So you should look like this. Okay, so let's review that again. So put the yarn in your hand, close your pinky, turn it up and flamenco dancer your knot. Boom, boom. Remember, boom, 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 boom. And keep this finger up. So as I told you what happens with the tension is that it's controlled by this violin string right here and it's controlled by the opening and closing of the back of your hand. So if I need more yarn the what happens is that you just naturally do it is this you'll open up your hand a little bit and it will slide more yarn out and then you close it when you got enough and then see this is loose now and therefore it, it will continually feed. So if it ever gets loose just take your hand out and reset it back in close it and then turn. You have your tension again and flamenco dancer it. Just like that. Now let's review on how to get your hook out of any stitch. 
that is actually pretty proper. Uh, that's actually something you need to know right off the bat. Okay, so I moved in the camera close. So what happens on here is that you will see that there's a loop that goes over top and like we have the knot underneath. So you can see that you can insert your hook in any which direction. Doesn't matter any which direction the way you turn it, it will always go in. Uh, but it will not always come out in the same direction. So see, whoops, that's not just me, you know, just ad-libbing for a camera. So let's turn it this way. Nope, can't get that out. Let's turn it forward like this. Nope, can't get it out. The only way that you can get this hook out of the, any of the loops is that by turning it upside down. Okay, so let's just, okay, so this is the bottom of the hook. Okay, this is the bottom. This is side, top, and side. So I can go in any direction that I wish. The problem is, is that I cannot get it out in any direction. So this is up, this is side, this is the back side. The only way that I can get it is that I have to turn the loop upside down and it comes out. Now the reason for that is that when you do that, you can push up with the back of the hook like this to form a space to get the, the, the hook out. See, if you pull up, it only runs into it. If you pull up, it only runs into it. But if you pull up and you turn the hook upside down, it comes right out. So what you have to do is that you have to get used to the motion of rotating your hook. So remember what I talked about with the thumb is that because I know where the thumb is, I can just simply rotate it down and out using the thumb as the, the key marker for telling me which direction the hook is in. So when I go in, I can go in any direction but when I come out, it has to be always facing down. So you're going to notice in crochet as we wrap stuff, you're always gonna turn the hook upside down and out through the loop because that's the only way that you can get things out through a loop is by turning upside down. Okay, so get used to turning that hook upside down and a lot of people forget that therefore they create a lot of problems for themselves right in the beginning. Okay, so let's begin to learn how to chain. Now the thing about the chain is that the very first loop on the hook that we just created, the slip knot, never counts as one. So in the instructions it says chain 64. You can never include this as one because the problem for this is that this loop completely disappears. Okay, so it's just more of a getting started loop. It's not a counting loop. So you gotta make sure that if it says chain 64 that the one that you started with with the slip knot, let's just review that again. So you just make it, you insert it onto the hook like that. You insert your fingers and you're ready to go. So it says chain 64 so this never counts as one. So in almost every instruction that I show you, I always say let's uh, remember that the slip knot never counts as one. And I used to teach crochet that it did count as one but then I kinda realized I was screwing up. So um, that was way back many, many, many years ago. So I always say that the slip knot never counts as one. So what we have to do is we have to chain 64. So what we, let's just practice chaining first and then you can do the 64 on your own in a bit. So in order to chain, you have to be able to get this string through this loop. So it's called yarning over. So you insert in, some people go from the back and pull it forward but you, it's very difficult to do that and it's not per the standards of crochet. So what you have to just do is that you rotate the hook back up underneath the string and rotate the hook and turn it upside down and get it ready to go through this loop here. So let's do that again. So you rotate backward, collect that yarn and turn that loop over. Do you see how this thumb here is resting on the flat space? I can tell which direction it is by rotating my thumb with the flat section of the hook. So just rotate back and, pu and pull it down. So rotate back and down, back and down. So now we have to get this loop through this one. So remember what I already explained to you. You can never get your hook out if it, unless it's upside down. So when you rotate back, you have to turn upside down. So some people when they go to learn, they, they don't turn upside down and it becomes impossible to turn out and then they have problems. So rotate back, turn upside down and pull through the loop. And as you do it, more yarn then slides in through your hands and more yarn is now available here. So unpinch and flamenco dancer the next knot that's here. So let go, see it's not going anywhere. You can let go and repinch. So as you make your chain, just let go and repinch the next one. So rotate backward, 
and rotate the hook, collect it and through. Let it go and then flamenco dance with the next knot that you, or next chain that you just made. So as you're doing it, the tension is coming from the back of your hand across the forward and so if it's loose, what happens is if it's loose, this finger here controls the tension. So if this is loose, I open my finger like this and I now have tension. So if it's too loose, see, I just move up my finger. So you will notice in crochet as you're crocheting through all the projects that as I need tension or I have tension or I need it, I just have to open up my hand and I suddenly have it. So if we need more yarn, we naturally just open up our back here, more yarn feeds through and etc. So if this is all loose here and here and no matter how much you open, see there's no tension now, see, just all loose, then all you just have to do is come in behind and just grab the yarn that's leading to the yarn ball and just pull it backward and then turn over your hand once again and again you have your tension. So you just rotate back and pull through. Rotate back and pull through. And you have to do a total of 64 chains. So just, I'm used to crocheting and I can do about four of these without having to let go but when you're new like you are, pinch and pull through, open and pinch. Okay, let go, pinch and pinch and this will allow you to create your tension easily by doing so. So in time when you become as used to crochet as I am, I can do like a multiple like this very easily without having to let go and my tension is still looking the same but when you're new you have to let go and repinch, let go and repinch and etc. So what I want you to do is that I want you to chain 64 if you're doing this project. If you're just doing this for the fun of it to learn crochet then you don't need to worry about it. It's just a test sample. So if you wanna do the actual sample itself, just go all the way to 64 for me. So when you chain just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, 7, 8 and go all the way to 64 and then meet me back here in just a moment and then we'll carry on to show you how to do the single crochet across your chain. So now we're gonna learn how to single crochet back across this chain. So you have your chain, just say it's 64, mine's just a sample and you want to put your hands back in and you want to go back across the chain. So normally in crochet for almost everything, it's barely, I don't even think I've seen an example where it says crochet in the next one from the hook. It's always second chain from the hook. So in order to count where that is, you see that there's one loop on the hook. See this next section right here? This is the first chain from the loop and this is the second, okay? So this is the first chain coming right out of this section right here. That's the first chain which is part of this one really and the second one is always right here. Okay, so first and second. So now let's begin a single crochet second chain from the hook. So we have one and two as I pointed out and now we're gonna take the hook and we're just gonna go into the second chain. So what I want you to do is that there's three strings that equal one chain and I want you to go into the chain so that you leave these two on top of the hook and the other third one is underneath the hook. So when you slide in, you're gonna slide in through the side. The very first one is always kind of the hardest. You slide in through the side, you still have the two strings on top and look underneath, there's one on the bottom. Okay, so do you see that? So you see that there's two strands and let me just grab my pencil here and when I separate these strands here, you'll notice that you'll see the hook in between. And what I want you to do is that I want you to yarn over, okay, so yarning over and pull it through that chain and I'll show you this again several times and then you have two loops on your hook yarning over and pull through two. That is a single crochet. That's your first official stitch. So if that's your first time ever crocheting, congratulations. So now you're gonna move to the next chain. So you'll see that there's two strings on the top and then there's one on the bottom. So just glide in through the side leaving those two strands on top. The chain is always the most kind of pain in the butt thing there is of crochet but once you get beyond the chain it becomes very easy. And what you wanna do is just glide in through the side leaving the two strands on top. So you're just gonna glide in through the side. You got two strands on top and one is underneath. Okay, so two strands on top, one is underneath. And you are just going to yarn over, pull through 
and then just yarn over and pull through two loops. A single crochet. So move to your next chain and as you see it's starting to loosen up on me because I've now gotten used to it. So I slide into the next chain right here and I pull through like that and then I pull through two. So I slide into the chain. My tensions are getting a little bit looser and you'll notice that with yourself too. So through the side there's two strands on top, one on the bottom. Yarning over, pull it through and then pull through two. Okay, so move to your next chain in through the side and then pull through and then pull through two. So you keep doing that all the way down your chain. So in through the side, pull through, pull through two. So what I want you to do is that I want you to single crochet yourself all the way down your chain. And take your time, it's not a race, in through the side. I'm going slower than I normally would so I'm kind of fumbling up here on camera. So I'm just counting in, pull through and etc. So please do that all the way down your chain and then when I come back I'll show you what to do next. So as you get all the way to cross your chain you're gonna get finally to the very end. So this is the very last one here and I can tell because there's nothing left, right? So it's just one last one to go. So this one that I'm about, that I'm going into was part of the slip knot here. This loop was part of the slip knot. See what happens when you pull on it? It disappears. So that's why it's never included as one. So you're thinking to yourself, gee that took a long time and you know it's pretty fumbly or whatever. It gets easier. The chain is always the hardest part of any project. So let's begin and we're gonna turn our work and we want to turn it in a way that this yarn strand goes behind the project. So just turn it so that it starts from behind the project here. Okay, so just turn it. So if you go to turn this and it's in front of the project, it doesn't work out so hot. See, you don't want it to go in front, you want it to stay in behind. So you can just let it go, move the yarn in behind and start like that. Okay, so if you turn it and it was in front, okay, just let the hook out, put it in behind and then put the hook back in. So let's start your next row. So all this baby blanket is, is just regular single crochet back and forth and you change and then you just keep on doing that and then you will just, um, just look at the project and how many inches that you need to do and I'll show you how to change color today too. So what happens here in crochet is that we have to get ourselves, so you see the distance of the height here? We have to build ourselves up to the height in order to go across the next row. The problem is right now, so I, I always classify it and this is my analogy that this is an apartment building and this is one story of an apartment building. So if it's half double crochet it'd be two stories and if it was uh, double crochet it'd be three stories. But I won't cloud your mind with too much of that right now. But the problem is is that right now I'm in, I'm at the entrance of the building. I'm not on the top floor of the first story. So like I'm not on the top of the first story. So what I want to do is that I need to climb up the side of the building first. So I have to always chain one. So chain one and now see where my hook is? I'm up to the same height that the other one was. See just by going like this. By doing that chain one. So I've got myself up. So what I want to do is that in the same one just follow it down. So go down the, the fire escape. So go down and go right into the same stitch that this is in. Okay. So now you're going to single crochet. So all you're just gonna do is just dive right into the same stitch where the fire escape is going down into and going in and then rotate and pull the yarn through. And remember to turn that hook upside down and then you'll have two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through. So now you just single crochet the very first stitch. So now you're just gonna continue to move. So you can feel it with your fingers on the open stitch works that's here. So remember there's always gonna be two strands of yarn that are making up one stitch right here. So if the pattern says go into the front loop, you're only gonna go into the front loop here and if the pattern says go into the back loop, you're only gonna go into the back loop but together they equal a stitch. Now why would you want front or back loops? That gives you ribbing. 
So that gives you a texture looks within projects. So let's do this one here. This is the very next one. You can see that this is part of this one if I pull it apart and now here's the next one. So dive right into the next one, yarning over, pulling through and then yarning over, pulling through two. And you're gonna do that all the way across. So just kinda pull it apart if you have to. So dive on in, grab your yarn and pull through. So go to your next one in, pull through, pull through two. And keep doing that all the way across. This is all this project is, is what I'm showing you right now. It's that easy. So just going in, pulling through and you're just gonna glide basically and single crochet yourself all the way across. Now there's double crochet and half double crochets and trebles and lots of great things but today's project is just a single crochet project back and forth and you can see how thick this is. So it's creating a beautifully closed blanket for a baby. So you're just gonna keep on moving across and then I'll see you at the end of your row and I'll show you how to identify the end stitch and then we're gonna review on how to go back across once again and then I'm gonna show you how to change colors too. So I'm gonna keep the camera going just to recap your mind on how to single crochet across. And you're coming up near to the end. So let's discuss the ending. So right now I can see that there is three stitches left on the end. Okay, we have one. Use your fingers to pinch it apart. So one, two and then three is right in the very end. Do you see that? So one, two and three. So let's finish off this together. So diving into the next one and the next one. And the next one is where people have a lot of trouble with. Now the next one people think that's a, not a stitch because of tension. Because I'm a Luke crochet and I'm experienced sometimes this appears to be like it's part of it and people stop one early so then they end up with a triangle. So what you have to do is you make sure that you identify that last one and single crochet as normal into it and you're done. So sometimes people think this extra loop here is part of another stitch. So what they'll do is they'll go in again and then add a second one. Now that's not incorrect in some way if you're building a project that is gaining stitches but then if you're not planning on that you will be gaining stitches and turning your blanket into a triangle. So let's turn our work. So we're gonna turn our work and what is the problem? The yarn is coming in front. So what are we gonna do about it? We're gonna take the hook out, move the yarn backward and then reset our hand. So let's build up. So remember what we have to do. We have to climb on top of the first story building and to do that we chain one. Then we have to single crochet by looking down the fire escape of the building and going right into the same one where it's coming out of. And you are going to single crochet that one. Pull through. And you are just gonna single crochet yourself in every stitch going across. So if you're not sure just use your fingers. You can see it. Okay, but see how you can just jam your hook in and you're getting it automatically as well. So just looking where you can see the spacing in between these. These, these are called posts. So I'm just diving my stitch in between the posts which is where the stitch is resting. And you're just gonna go all the way across. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna get all the way across and then I'm gonna show you how to change color because if you can change color and that there's no weird stuff going on then it's awesome because you don't have any loose ends there, right? It's not a trick. It's just a technique and I'm gonna show you how to do that next. So get yourself all the way to the end of the row and if you're creating this pattern then just get to the dimensions that it says. It says to um, do this particular color until it measures 10 inches tall of this color and then you're gonna switch to a different color and then etc. and you can follow that in the pattern. So uh, I'm gonna show you how to change color next and if you need to wait then just do what you just uh, what you already know and then meet me back after you get 10 inches and if you're just doing this as a practice sample we're about to change color anyway and you can learn how to do that at the same time too.
So now we're gonna add a second color. So you wanna make sure you go into the very last stitch. You can see that it's not filled in yet. So you're gonna go into your last stitch and you're gonna finish it as normal and then you'll end up with a loop. So to finish this off what you wanna do is just grab your scissors and just cut it and it's about maybe about 10 inches long and you're gonna cut your scissors or get your scissors and cut. To lock this loop from ever falling out you're going to take this yarn and pull it through this loop. Just pull it all the way through. It goes all the way out and then just pull tight. And that now just locks this from ever falling out and what I want you to do is that I want you to move to the next stitch going in and grabbing this strand I want you to pull this through. This is called weaving in your ends. And now I want you to go about two inches. So going into the next stitch from the other side because the yarn has been pulled out on this side and you're going to pull it through the other side. This is a way of getting in, rid of your loose ends. So going in and this only really works well when you're going to crochet something over top of it. On the end of your project you're gonna wanna use a darning needle to weave it in and I'll show you how to do that later too. So we're gonna just weaving in your ends to what you think you're satisfied. I'd go about at least two inches and then once you're satisfied just leave it at the back end. And now this is where we finished. So what we have to do is turn the project and get ready to go back across this now with fresh yarn. So let's do that next. So there's two ways to begin. The proper way of doing this is never creating a, a knot in the beginning but I get paranoid and things like to fall out sometimes and that's just because I'm paranoid. So it's that's something that you have to decide what works for you. The technical way to do it is that you create no knots at all on your work and what you're going to do is that you insert your hook into the very first stitch. Okay and technically this is where the loop would have been if you were not changing color and what you're gonna do is just take the loop here and just feed the loop through and you're going to drop the yarn strand that is shorter on top of the project like so. So it's gonna ride across the top and what you wanna just kinda do is kinda pinch that down and reset your hand and you're going to want to chain one. So this is the starting loop. You wanna chain up one so you're going up the side of the apartment building and then you wanna come down the fire escape and go into to the same stitch you did the join in and you wanna single crochet. But here's the trick. When you go to do this what you wanna do is leave this strand down on top of the line and it will wrap this strand around it and catch it underneath. underneath. So let's just pull through and now you have your two again and pull through. So you can see now that this is coming out from the bottom of that area. So you go into the next stitch. See how this strand is gonna wrap around and trap that straggler in underneath and you single crochet and you keep moving down until you run out of string. I would only go about two inches and then I would cut it if, it, if you've done it longer than that. And you keep on going across like so until you can completely bury it in and then once you're satisfied with it you can let it hang out and you can take scissors later and being able to uh, cut that out later and now you're just gonna single crochet yourself back across. So two things just happened. You finished off with the orange yarn here. There's no strands hanging out right here and you also started with the purple yarn here and there's no strands hanging out but through here. So this is in the back end. You can take both of these strings and now cut them and so therefore you never have any loose ends hanging out of a project in midway and now you're just going to single crochet yourself as normal back and forth using this color of yarn. So what I want you to do is that I want you to single crochet yourself all the way across this line and I'm going to review on how to go back and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to change your uh, color completely out and what we're going to do is I'll show you how to finish the project using a darning needle at the very end so that you can finish this off quite nicely for yourself. So now coming up to the end of the row and remember to go into that last one and then we're gonna turn our work. So we turn our work making sure that the yarn strand is in behind. So just drop it, push it in behind and then you're good to go. So we just chain up one so we're creating ourselves to go up the, the side of the building, come down the fire escape and into the first stitch again and then you're just gonna single crochet yourself all the way across. 
and you're gonna continue to do this until it states otherwise on the pattern and then when I get to the other side I'm gonna show you how to finish your yarn off completely and using a darning needle to weave in your loose ends so that you have nothing falling out ever so that you can hand this over as a gift for somebody and not have to worry about that. This particular pattern has no uh, border to it and it's really quite a simple pattern to begin with as well. So let's uh, begin to do that next. So I'm almost at the other side now. So as you come to the other side you wanna make sure that you can identify that very last stitch. That's the secret to not creating a triangle blanket if you didn't mean to and you wanna go into your very last one and pull through. So let's just say that this blanket is done. So what I want you to do is that you have a loop here and you are going to cut your string and you're gonna cut enough that you can get it into a darning needle easily. So then just loop it over and pull through and lock it. So what are you gonna do with this end and you also have the beginning one that you dealt with as well. So what you're gonna do is grab a darning needle and with the darning needle you want to take the yarn and kind of pinch it down. It really collapses nicely and just feed it through the eye of the needle. And the secret to locking in your yarn is to go back and forth three times. So you're just gonna take the needle and you're just going to glide it up underneath the stitches. Not on top here but right underneath the first set of stitches for about an inch or two. So if you see it popping out on the side here you'll wreck the border look. So just going in and just pulling it through and you pull everything and when you go to pull it the first time just make sure that it doesn't lose its structure. So don't pull it to the point where it's starting to look like that. So you wanna make it look nice. So then the second pass is that you have to go through a different section of it. So you have to go through a different set of fibers but in the other direction from which you just came. Okay, I can pull it through and then finally for the third time and this does happen not often but of course it has to happen in the beginning of the tutorial is that you're going to pass it through the third time. This can never fall out because you've gone back and forth three times. It's impossible for this thing to fall out. So what you can just do then is that once you've done it the third time you can safely cut it down to the project and it's completely gone. So then the other one that we have here this is already a slip knot here. So what you can just do is that you can just put this into an eye of the needle and again just kind of pinching it and gliding it up underneath the stitches for about an inch. Now I didn't leave much of a, a yarn strand for myself but I can go in once, make sure I don't lose my structure and then I'm just gonna pull it a little bit tighter here and then I go in the other direction for twice and then finally in the third direction for the last time. Try not stabbing yourself at the same time and then that's it. So now you've done that. It's completely locked into position. You can safely trim it and that would be it there. So all you just gotta do is kinda pull on it a little bit if it's lost. It's um, as long as every stitch is, has been done right. You will notice that the, the it'll look really awesome and over time it'll be great. So you're gonna notice for yourself if this is a beginner that it may look wobbly in the very beginning but once you start doing more and more rows you're gonna find your tension and then the project is gonna look more consistent and no matter how you do it it'll always look the same. So you can see it's the same kind of gauge that I have because I have a technical way of crocheting that is always the same because it's 30 years crochet that I've been able to do. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarn Inspirations as well as thecrochetcrowd.com. This is the beginner tutorial on learning to crochet using the color block crochet baby blanket. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.